Now, today we're seeing some of the first two funeral visitations of the 21 people and children murdered one week ago at the Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. The burials for both children will be held tomorrow. And also here, we are dealing with the fallout from the shooting at the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida, more than four years ago. We still do not have a trial date for the Broward Sheriff Deputy Scott Peterson. Peterson faces multiple charges of criminal neglect, and investigators say he actually hid and avoided responding during that Valentine's Day massacre. Also, the sentencing phase of Nicholas Cruz's trial, that shooter is still dragging on. A spike in COVID cases and questions about the objectivity of the jury pool have delayed the start of this trial by more than a month. Cruz now has already pleaded guilty to the shooting that killed 17 people, but the jury now has to decide whether to recommend the death penalty or life in prison. And Joining me now is Tony Montalto. He lost his 14-year-old daughter, Gina, in the Parkland, Florida school shooting, and he is also the president of Stand With Parkland, the National Association of Families for Safe Schools. Tony, thank you so much for joining us here today. We certainly appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. Um, obviously, uh, it's got to be incredibly emotional for you as trials are getting underway. It's been four years um, and, you know, they say the wheels of justice move slow, but what is it like for you and your family as we still don't even have a, a trial set for um, Peterson, as we just mentioned, for it to go on and you still are waiting? Well, sadly, after all these trials, we're going to be in the same place we are today. Peterson will still be out there and uh, so will Mr. Cruz and um, our families will be without our loved ones. A terrible thing for any parent and as well as the uh, spouses that lost their their loved ones. Your daughter was just 14 years old, beautiful Gina, and we're going to talk about the foundation that you created in her memory and, and what people can do because I think a lot of people are now galvanizing no more. We need to find real solutions. Um, Tony, you've, you've obviously been watching the debate that's come out of Uvalde, um, mm -hmm. and we see the president yesterday making comments about handguns, nine millimeters, and Canada banning guns, and you know, all this talk that has many people, you know, wondering if, if this was the solution or if we need to look at something like the mental health crisis that is plaguing a lot of teens and youth. Where do you stand since you are so personally affected by school shooting and losing your own daughter? Well, Stand with Parkland, the National Association of Families for Safe Schools, believes this is an and problem. Uh, we look at things in the uh, school safety triad, which is securing the campus, better mental health screening and support programs, and finally, if you choose to own one, responsible firearms ownership. All three of those things failed our families here in Florida. And I'm afraid we're going to find that all three of those things failed those families in Texas. So it, it, there's no one solution. There's no magic wand to solve this problem. We have to look at a broad base of solutions and uh, certainly some basics uh, with firearms and, and having uh, background checks prior to purchase requiring the safe storage where it's not going to be accessed by children and where it's not likely to be stolen as well as having red flag laws which we passed here in Florida after, sadly after the tragedy. Um, that triumvirate of things will be the uh, least impactful on firearms owners. However, they will make the majority of us safe, and that's what we need to work towards. Of course, and I know just days before Uvalde here in Florida, there was a passage of a mental health law that DeSantis signed in that you were very supportive of, um, and you'd obviously like to see that component sort of expanded, I would think, nationwide as well. Well, these are, uh, are, are you know, as I said, it's a, it's a, it's a multi-tiered problem. Here in Florida with uh, HB 899, uh, that provided uh, more information to students that are getting help from schools to uh, look at what is already available in the community and have them have access to it. Additionally, a really important part of that is something that uh, Stan with Parkland came up with, which is requiring a mental health coordinator in each of our school districts, someone to overview the process and make sure that our students are on track for the best possible outcome. You know, Tony, you've made some real impact here and your beautiful daughter, there is a foundation. Tell us about how people can help and uh, support support other students that may need it in her memory. Well, uh, to support uh, your viewers' families, um, we suggest you, you go to standwithparkland.org uh, and uh, certainly look at our five questions every family should ask and our resources page. Um, as far as uh, my beautiful daughter Gina goes, we have the Gina Rose Montalto Memorial Foundation and uh, there we give uh, out scholarships to uh, people choosing secondary education as well as uh, things that Gina supported uh, such as uh, the Girl Scouts and uh, the Friendship Journey and Challenge Air for kids and friends. Uh. So incredibly, um, thank, thank you for coming in, so incredibly powerful and, and sad for your loss and we just 
we continue to um, just mourn and, and thank you for, for joining us today in, in these difficult times. Well, thank you for allowing us to come on and, and speak about the things that can be done because the hardest bill we'll pass in Congress is the first one that shows that the Republicans and the Democrats can work together. Let's see it happen. Tony Montaldo, thank you so much, sir. Thank you.